Hey everyone, we are working in VR today and we're going to be talking a little bit about locomotion. So in the previous videos, if you didn't get a chance to see them, uh, we did talk about like kind of beginner locomotion and getting it started and avoiding motion sickness and all that. So right now I have a locomotion system set up. It's really plain. As you can see, I can go off the map. Nothing you know bad will happen to me. Uh, no worries there. But one thing that we did not address previously is how do I get locomotion to stop if I, let's say, run through a wall? Take, for example, this blue ball in front of me. I can go straight through it and no penalties will occur. But that wall in front of me, I've now set up a system so that I can no longer go straight through it. As soon as I get real close, it's just going to stop me right there in my tracks. So we're going to be talking in this video about that system. Now keep in mind, it is not a foolproof system. There are some glitches that can get you through walls. And so we'll be talking about those and possibly how to avoid them as well. All right, so let's get started. We've removed the headset. We're transitioning into developer mode. So in my scene, um, I have added a wall. It's nothing spectacular. I just went game object, 3D object, cube. And I changed, of course, the transform position to be you know, somewhere in the middle, and then I, I changed my scale so that it was like a scale of uh, 10 in the x direction and three in the y direction, and I don't know, maybe you want it to be like 0.5, not so thick in the z direction, it's really up to you. But um, that's how I created my wall, I renamed it wall, that's all, nothing special. So let's open up our script and let's see what's changed. It's the move with locomotion script, all right. So um, there are a couple of new things. Let's go ahead and point them out. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like copy all this because that's the new stuff and delete it. Let's look at our old script and see um, what we can change about the old script to make it into the new script. So we used to use our, well, I guess we still use it. Um, this is what we had previously. We, we got our forward direction and our right direction and we removed the Y components because we wanted our motion to be just flat on a plane without any Y directions. If you do want the Y direction to be in your game, um, I will be talking about that in a video to come because that is a little bit more tricky when you have like slopes and things like that. For the trackpad input, um, we're taking it from the right hand. You could easily take it from the left hand as well if you wanted to or give the user an option like which hand they should use for their motion. Um, right now we're just using if they're touching the trackpad, but uh, you could also implement a system where they could like press down on the trackpad. I wouldn't recommend that because of current issues with the valve index. I don't know if they fixed those yet, but people are having trouble when they had to like press down. All right, so uh, we do define our position to move to and we also set that position in our script. And so what we're gonna need to do is check if there's something in the way before we actually move. And then we're also going to need to um, make a couple of changes. So if there is something in the way, let's not move. Or if there's you know nothing in our way, then let's, let's keep going. So that's where the ray cast comes in. So here is my new code here. I'll go ahead and highlight it for you. Um, I've written just three lines. So the first one is defining a ray. When you do a ray cast, we're basically drawing out a ray, as in like a mathematical ray, a point with a direction. And so we need to tell it an origin and a direction. Now the origin is the place where the ray starts and the direction is like, where is that ray pointing to? So ideally, our origin would be where our player is located and our direction would be where the player is about to move. So if we can set that up, that would be awesome. Well, our Vive camera eye represents the player's head's location. So that's a good starting point for our Raycast system. We'll check if there's something um, starting from where their head is located, going in the direction that they're about to move. And then we have to save a little bit of data, the Raycast hit, so the raycast hit will let us return like what object did we hit and how far away is it. So currently what we're doing is we are checking if the raycast does not hit that exclamation point right there in the front is telling us if it does not hit and we're using the ray that we just defined, the hit data that we want to save it under and then um, a distance of one. You can easily change this distance. It doesn't have to be one if artificially like chosen one as the closest a person can get to the wall. 
If, if that's the case, then what we'll do is we'll move our vibe rig in that direction. And that will give us our locomotion effect. Um, keep in mind that our ray is going in the direction of the trackpad input. So a couple of things to consider. As you guys saw, I was able to get through the wall by moving in at an angle. So if I move towards the wall at an angle, since I have a distance of one, um, it'll still let me get closer. And that can be a problem. So there are a lot of considerations to make when you're trying to prevent a player from moving through the wall. For example, I could give the player a collider, but I'd have to be careful about giving them a collider because that can have other effects on their motion and stuff like that. For example, let me say I take this Vive rig and I'm going to unpack the prefab because I want to edit it now and I go onto the camera and I add a component for a uh, box collider. Now I'd want to edit this collider so that it didn't have a length of one. Maybe I wanted to have a, a size of like um, 0 0.5 in every direction. Oops. All right, so now I have a box collider that'll you know, be attached to the player's head. We could possibly run into some issues, right? That's the first one. Um, the cube and the sphere, they've been knocked out of position right away because our player has moved into that place. Now, if I take my controller and I go towards the wall, um, there, I don't think there's anything stopping me from going through the wall if I use that old system. I think I should still be able to go through the wall. Let me try it. I'm gonna move my head back, go forward. Oh, I'm having trouble here. There we go. And there, there we are, I'm through the wall. So a collider doesn't really stop me from going through the wall, um, especially if I'm in a room scale environment and I can actually walk around. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, colliders are not enough. We will need some you know, high-tech scripting to prevent that kind of issue from happening. But this is already a giant step forward. Having that ray cast means um, your typical player, you know, until they start to really try and break things down, until they get really desperate, they're gonna think that, hey, I just can't go through that wall. Let's address an issue though. So some of you guys kind of thought this in your head and some of you maybe didn't notice. Um, we're checking the direction from the player's head. What about from their feet? What if there's an obstacle that's maybe like half the body's height and um, it's preventing them from moving forward, but they can still move forward because their head is above the object. An example, a great example is like these spheres and this cube. You shouldn't really be able to walk through them, but with our current locomotion, you can. We need to add, you know, pretty much another ray cast. So currently we're just using the ray cast for their height, but what about the ray cast for their feet? Well, before we can raycast um, from their knees, let's say, um, we should probably know how tall the player is. So we're gonna make a couple of changes to our script. Um, starting with, we're gonna do something at start. It, it really shouldn't be at start. We should you know, uh, create some kind of function that the players get to determine when they set their height, but we'll just do it at start just for simplicity's sake. So what we wanna do is we wanna have some kind of, I'm gonna make this one private, and this will be a float height. Um, we wanna define our height. So height equals, and our height should really be the, the Vive Camera Eye's height. Vive Camera Eye dot position dot Y. Simple as that. We're just gonna get the, the Y coordinate of the Vive Camera Eye. So let's try this out and see if it works. So this should define our player's height. Oh, you know what? Even if it works, we won't be able to tell. Um, we want to debug.log our height. All right, now we can figure out if it's working. So when I press play, um, we wanna make sure that it's given us a non-zero height because if it does return zero, then that's not too helpful. So our height should pretty much match up with the Y coordinate right here. It should be about one. So let's check our console. And as you can see, we do have a Y coordinate of about one. Perfect. 
So that's telling us her height, which means we can then use that for our ray cast. Now, if this didn't work, then I'd probably want to delay it until maybe the headset has some time to adjust. Um, you could also do an average value over a number of frames. I'm not going to get into how to do that, but if you wanted to collect an average, you'd just collect a bunch of heights, maybe like 100 heights over 100 frames, and then take the average of those 100. Okay, so instead of just raycasting one ray, we're actually going to be raycasting two rays. So we're going to create another ray variable. Um, let's call, let's give these names instead of Ray, I'm going to right click and rename and we'll call this, um, I Ray and notice how it changed that one as well for me. I'm going to create another Ray and I'll call this, um, knee, oops, knee Ray. So this should be at about the knee height and it's going to be a new Ray. Now instead of vive camera eye dot position, what we're going to do is we're going to do vive camera eye dot position minus vector three dot up times height times zero point seven five f. Let's go about three quarters of the way down. So that'll take their height, multiplied by a point seven five, so it'll be about seventy five percent of their height, and then um, the up vector three is just one in the y direction. So we're going to be subtracting in the y direction by about 0.75 times our height. So that'll be our new origin, and then we'll go in the same direction position. So we're not changing a whole lot, we're just kind of shifting it downwards a little bit. We'll need a new raycast hit. So raycast hit, knee hit. Let's go ahead and uh, rename the previous hit to maybe I hit. Rename I hit. And um, at this point, so we're currently checking if this raycast is not hitting, great. Let's also check if our knee raycast is not hitting. So if, we're pretty much copying everything here, so I might as well just copy this. Copy, paste, and um, instead of using eye ray, we're gonna use knee ray. And instead of using eye hit, we're gonna use knee hit. So this small change here is going to upgrade our, our ray casting system a little bit. Um, it's going to determine if there's something at our knees. Let's not, you know, let's not move right through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the headset on. Oh, I look funny doing this. Let's hit play. Grab my controller. Oh, I forgot to take away the collider, didn't I? Let me go ahead and fix that real quick. Um, I gotta take out did I forget to take away the collider? It looks like the collider is gone. Somehow though, that cube in the, oh, you know what it is? It's because I moved this guy right there. Let me just do that. I think that's what it was. Okay, so now um, my locomotion is working, but check it out, I've been stopped. There's something behind me apparently. Um, and if I try to go through the cube, I've been stopped because that knee ray is preventing me from going through. All right, so I think we're running out of time, but um, we're off to a good start. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about locomotion, please check out the next video where we'll talk about um, preventing players from getting through the wall by working the system.